The Grocer and the Parrot Once a grocer had a green talking parrot. His voice was very sweet. The parrot always remained present in the shop and kept on entertaining the customers. With his interesting talk, he knew it very well at how to talk with the human beings. One day, the grocer left the shop for some urgent piece of work. The parrot began to fly here and there after his departure. Suddenly, he hit upon the bottle of a rose oil and the bottle broke up. When the grocer returned, he found everything dipped in oil. Even the grocer's cloak was also stained with oil. The grocer got very angry and he hit on the parrot's head. The parrot got very sad and he stopped talking. Soon his feathers began to fall. He kept on seeing the grocer silently, sitting in a corner of the shop. The grocer now felt guilty. One day the grocer saw that even the last feather of the parrot had also fallen. He was not totally a bald parrot. To see that, the grocer murmured, I shouldn't have hit this beautiful bird. Then the grocer began to give alms, hoping that the parrot would start talking again. Three days and three nights had passed, but the parrot remained silent. Now the grocer got dejected, but he kept on talking to the parrot, hoping one day he would start talking. One day, a bald man entered the shop and the parrot began to make a noise. He then talked to the bald man and said, Oh, bald man, look at me. Did you also break the bottle of oil? All the people present in the shop began to laugh. Actually, the bald man was a religious scholar and he had shaved his head due to some religious reasons. But the parrot was sure that he had also broken some bottle of oil. The Donkey of a Water Carrier An old water carrier had a feeble and weak donkey. He used to sell water by going door to door and earn his livelihood. He often did not have money to buy even fodder for his donkey. The donkey had to carry heavy weight on his back. His back got hurt carrying this weight, but in spite of it, he got very really less food to eat. The watchman of the royal stable was a friend of the water carrier. One day, as he saw the donkey, he felt pity for him. He asked his friend, It seems you give him very less fodder to eat. Look how feeble he has got. The old man replied, Dear friend, I myself live hand to mouth, so how can it be expected from me that I would be giving good food to my donkey? The watchman said, Give me a donkey for few days. I will keep him in the royal stable and hence he will be soon healthy and active. The old man happily allowed him to take his horse. When the donkey reached the royal stable, he got amazed to see the beautiful Arabian horses there. The animals there were provided ample food. When the donkey compared his food with the food of the royal horses, he became very sad. He said, Oh God, why did you not give this comfort to me too? Why all the worries are only for me? I'm always hungry and I cannot even stand easily because of the wounds on my back. I am in a miserable state, whereas here, the horses are living lavishly. One day, the donkey was again complaining the same when suddenly the enemy attacked and the war broke out. The beautiful Arabian horses were made ready to go in the battlefield. The donkey spent the whole day standing alone in the stable whereas the horses were busy in the warfare. In the evening, the wounded and tired horses were brought back to the stable. Their bodies were shot with arrows. The arrows were put out from their bodies and their treatment began. Some of them died due to the pain. When the donkey saw the miserable state of horses, he thanked God and prayed, O oh God, I am happy with my hunger and misery. It is a blessing for me that you did not put me in the hardship of war. I do not need such comfort which leads towards dust and ruin. A Foolish Friend Long time ago, a wrestler was passing through a jungle. 
He saw that a snake was trying to attack a bear, whereas the bear seemed afraid. When the wrestler saw it, he began to feel pity for him. He killed the snake and saved the bear. The bear seemed thankful for this kind act. Therefore, both became friends. The wrestler was traveling on foot for a long time and had got tired. Therefore, as he laid down under the shade of a tree to take some rest, the bear also sat beside him. Meanwhile, a wise man passed by. Seeing that, he asked the wrestler, What is the reason behind your friendship with this bear? The wrestler narrated the whole incident that how had he saved bear's life. Hearing the whole thing, wise man said, This animal is not trustworthy. It may harm you any time. You better get rid of it as soon as possible. Hearing this, the wrestler got angry and said rudely, You are jealous of me and nothing else. One cannot find such a wise bear in the whole jungle. The wrestler did not pay heed to the wise man's advice. However, the wise man once again tried to make him understand before departure but in vain. The wrestler had considered the wise man nothing but a foe. The wrestler was now considering the bear as his best friend. Therefore, immediately after the departure of wise man, the wrestler fell asleep. The bear sat beside him and began to scatter the flies away from his face. He kept on trying for some time, but when the flies did not stop, the bear carried a heavy stone to kill the flies. Then as the flies gathered at wrestler's face, the bear threw the heavy stone at wrestler's face with full strength. In this way, the foolish wrestler died on the spot. So friends, this story teaches us a lesson that we should always stay away from a foolish friend. For the treasure. Once there lived a man in Baghdad. He used to live a luxurious life. He spent all his wealth lavishly and resultantly there came a time when he became indigent. When he left with nothing, he decided to ask for help from his friends and relatives. But to his utter desperation, nobody helped him. People who were once his friends now were not ready to give him even a single penny as they all knew that he was left with nothing. It was a shocking reality for him. One day as he was pondering the circumstances laying in his bed, he went asleep and began to dream. In his dream, he saw a kind man who advised him to be courageous and told him about a buried treasure in Egypt. Next morning, as he got up, he kept on thinking about his dream. For many hours, he wanted to get rid of this miserable life at every cost. So he decided to go to Egypt. He sent off his journey, but he had gone just few miles away when he thought that he had nothing at his, his luggage. He got very anxious. He hit upon an idea. As he was in rags, he decided to beg from the people passing by. Him. When it became dark he, and he was assured that nobody could recognize him, he began to beg but nobody gave him even a single penny. Trying for hours, when he became disappointed, he began to search for some proper place to take a rest. To see him wandering here and there, the watchman became suspicious. He considered him some thief and began to beat him without even inquiring. After receiving so many slaps and punches, he managed to tell the watchman that he was not a thief but a traveler. Then he narrated the whole dream. To hear the dream about the treasure, the watchman began to weep. So the traveler got surprised and asked the watchman reason behind his weeping. Although you are not a thief or a bad person, but you are indeed foolish, believing a dream, you have come here. I have dreamed many times of such treasures. 
Many times a man came in my dream and told me about a house situated in Baghdad, having treasure buried inside it. But I never believed in such dreams. The traveler was stunned at hearing this because the house which the watchman was talking about was the traveler's own house. Now the traveler thanked the watchman and went back towards home. When he reached home, he began to dig the earth near a tree. After a short time, he found a box full of treasure. Now he had thought that how ignorant he was of his own house and he traveled far away. The Contest Once some Chinese artists and the Anatolian artists began to argue that who were better artists. They went to the king to prove their superiority over one another. The king decided to hold a contest to prove the truth. The king called the artist and said, I am going to hold a contest to see who is worthy between the both parties. Both parties agreed. The Chinese artist suggested, Your Majesty, give a separate room to each party in which we could show our skills. Both the parties were given separate rooms which were located in front of each other. At fixed time, both parties began their work. The Chinese artist demanded 100 different colors from the king. On the contrary, the Anatolian artist did not ask for any color and declared that there was no need of colors until the walls were not properly cleaned. So they continued cleaning the walls. The days passed by. Now the Anatolian artist had made the room as clean and clear as sky. The Chinese artist had also beautified the room with different pictures made in bright colors. At the fixed time, when the king reached to see the work done by both parties, he got amazed seeing the work of Chinese artists. When the king entered the other room, he was surprised as there was not even a single picture on the wall. But before the king could say anything, the Anatolian artist raised the curtain which separated the rooms of both parties. Resultantly, all the pictures made by Chinese artists begin to reflect on the clean and clear walls of Anatolian's room. The pictures were looking even more brighter and attractive. The art of reflection used by the Anatolian artist was really worthy to be praised. The king, impressed with their work, declared the Anatolian as winners. The New Appearance Once a jackal was passing by a village that he suddenly fell into a paint box. When he got out of the paint box, his skin got colored. To see his changed appearance, the jackal got very happy. He thought that he had changed Damn. into a peacock as his hair had become very beautiful and shining. Therefore, when he reached into the forest and asked his fellow jackals, My friends, look at me and guess who am I? How beautiful my complexion is! When the other jackals saw him proud, they said, Dear friend, you should not be proud for this new appearance is temporary. It will not take long that this color would fade. But the proud jackal did not pay attention to their advice and said, Do not anybody dare to call me jackal now. A jackal asked smiling, Then what should we call you? The proud jackal replied, My new name is Peacock, so you should call me by this name. Hearing this, everybody began to laugh and asked, Do you live in a garden? As the peacocks live in gardens, the proud jackal replied, No, I do not live in a garden. I live in forest. Then they further asked, Can you dance and sound like peacocks? The jackal again replied, No. Then one of the jackals said, If you cannot do anything like peacocks, then how can you be a peacock? Nature has beautified the peacocks with shining colored feathers. One cannot be a peacock by only dyeing one's skin. So kids, best people are those who do not forget their identity and do not feel proud 
at temporary physical changes. Help everyone. Once a dog was very ill. It was near to die and its master was crying as he loved his dog a lot. He was crying bitterly and was shouting, My dear faithful dog is dying and I am helpless. I cannot do anything for it. Hearing his sighs, a beggar stopped and went near him. He asked the man, What is wrong with your dog? The man said, It has not eaten anything for many days. The beggar said, My brother, we do not have any option except to stay patient. Meanwhile, the beggar saw something tied to the man's back. He asked about that. The man replied that was bread to eat during his journey. The beggar said in surprise, If you have bread, why don't you give it to your dying hungry dog? The man replied, There is no doubt that I love my dog, but not as much as I love myself. The bread is bought with money, whereas the tears are of no value. I can shed as many tears as I want. So I'm weeping for my dog. The beggar got furious and cursed him. Then he said, You are nothing but a foolish fellow. You are comparing money with tears. The tears are priceless and you are comparing it with material wealth. <clears throat> One must help every living being, whether a human being or some other living creature. Light of Knowledge An elephant was brought in Iran for the first time for the purpose of exhibition. He was kept in a dark house so that no one could see him without light. Four visitors came at night to see the elephant there and then. They said, we do not have any light, but let us see the elephant. We will pay whatever you would demand for. So they were allowed. One of them came near the elephant. He touched his trunk. Then he came out and said, the elephant is round, conical and long like a tape. The second one went inside. He touched the elephant's legs and said, I have seen the elephant. He is like a pillar. The third one touched his ears and said, The elephant is like a fan. He is also somewhat broad and soft. The fourth one touched the elephant's back. He said that the elephant was similar to a plank. If they had light with them, there would have been no disagreement among them. Similarly, the disagreement among all human beings is because of ignorance. If they would benefit from the light of knowledge, they would neither argue nor quarrel with each other. The customer who used to eat clay. Once a man used to eat clay. One day he went to a grocer to buy some sugar. The grocer was a cunning fellow. He had got the wheat made of clay. He knew it that the customer liked to eat clay. Therefore, he intentionally told the customer about his clay weights. The customer got excited to hear this but did not show. The grocer went happily inside, go down to bring sugar. So in the grocer's absence, the customer began to eat the clay. On the other hand, the grocer was intentionally delaying to bring sugar. He murmured, Oh foolish fellow, you are actually doing good to me eating clay from the weeds. Apparently, you are befooling me, but you will later find that you befooled none but yourself. You see kids, often the birds are deceived by the hunter to see the grains and hence they are caught up in a trap. Therefore, one must avoid one's bad habits. A Philosopher and a Bedouin Once a Bedouin put two sacks on his camel and set out for a journey. The Bedouin was sitting in the middle of the two sacks. Suddenly he met a proud philosopher on his way. The philosopher stopped the Bedouin and began to talk. Bedouin asked him about his native city and then about his work. After that he asked the Bedouin, what have you loaded on your camel in the sacks? The Bedouin replied, One of them has wheat, whereas the other has sand. 
The philosopher began to laugh, to hear it and taunt it. If you were intelligent, you would have loaded half wheat in one sack and the other half in the second. In this way, you could lessen the load on camel and boost his speed. The Bedouin had not thought it before. He got so much impressed with the philosopher's intellect, he very respectfully offered the philosopher to ride the camel too. The Bedouin accepted the offer and both began to travel. They continued gossips. The Bedouin was a bit confused that why an intelligent and wise man like the philosopher was in rags like beggars. He decided to ask the questions to the philosopher. Therefore he said, O oh, wise man, kindly tell me something about yourself. Why are you wandering in desert in this state? Are you some king or a minister who has disguided himself? The philosopher replied, I am nothing but a layman. The Paduan asked curiously, How many camels and bulls do you have? The philosopher replied, I do not have any camel or bull. The Paduan said, Then you must have some property. The philosopher replied, I do not have any property too. Hearing this, Paduan asked, Then tell me, what kind of wealth do you possess? As you have a lot of knowledge, you would be knowing the art to change bronze into gold. The philosopher once again said, Trust me, I don't even have this much money to buy one day's food. I only wear rags and wander here and there. My intellect and knowledge give me nothing but dreams. As the Bedouin heard it all, he kicked the philosopher, threw him away and advised him, It's better to utilize your knowledge and earn your bread and butter rather wandering here and there. The Beautiful Feathers Once a man was passing through a jungle. Suddenly he saw a beautiful peacock inside lush green bushes. But to his surprise, the peacock was plucking his beautiful feathers and throwing them away. The man reached to the peacock and asked, O oh, beautiful peacock, why are you plucking your beautiful feathers brutally? Don't you know that people love to collect your feathers? They use them to decorate their houses. I think you are not aware of the beauty of yourself. Do you intend to change your appearance? As the peacock heard it, he began to cry. The man began to feel guilty that he had hurt the peacock. The peacock said, My friend, it is sad that you are blaming me for plucking my feathers. Don't you know that my beauty is in fact my biggest enemy? The hunters hunt peacocks for their beautiful feathers. I am therefore doing it all to save myself. It is true that I will look ugly by doing so, but it is also true that in this way I will be safe and sound. So friends, a humble and simple way of living protects us from many dangers. Ignorance Once there lived a poor man in a village. He only had a cow, and hence he loved her very much. He took care of her day and night. One day, he hurried to go somewhere and he forgot to shut the door of cow's enclosure. There lived a lion near the village too. Since long, he wanted to hunt the cow. That day, when the lion reached near the enclosure, he found the door opened. He entered inside enclosure, attacked the cow and tore it into pieces. After eating to his fill, the lion began to feel sleepy, so he fell asleep at cow's place. At night, the cow's owner returned and went to see the cow. In the dark, the man saw the lion sitting inside enclosure and thought it was his cow. So he went near lion and began to pat his back with love. If he would come to know that it was not his cow, but a lion, he would have died with fear. So his ignorance keeps him calm even in the face of danger. The worry about subsistence. Once there lived a healthy cow in a forest. Every day early in the morning, she used to go in the pasture. She used to graze the lush green grass all the day long and returned her home in the evening. 
The plenty of good and fresh food had made her healthy enough. But even after grazing the whole day, she did not get satisfied and always used to worry about next day's food. She used to think the whole night whether she would get anything to eat tomorrow or not. She remained thinking the whole night and then in the morning again went to the pasture. When she returned, she once again began to worry about next day's meal. She never thought anything except worrying about food and thus she lost a big part of her life in it. Although there was nobody in the pasture to stop her grazing, but even then she always kept on worrying about next day. The story teaches us that the man is like cow, who is always in worry about his future, instead of making the best of his present moment. Old Age Once there lived an old man in a city. He was getting weak day by day as he had caught many diseases. Once he went to a physician at his friend's advice and began to tell him about his state. He said, I'm losing my memory. The physician listened to him carefully and replied, Don't worry, it is just because you're getting old. The old man further said, I cannot see properly too, as my eyesight is also getting weak. The physician again said, it is also because of your old age. The old man then said, I am also having backache. The physician replied, the same this time too. Then the old man said, my stomach is also getting out of order. I digest food with a lot of difficulty. The physician said, it is also because of your age factor. Actually, old age brings many diseases at a time. To hear it again, the old man became furious. He angrily said to the physician, you stupid fellow, have you learned this? Don't you know that there is a remedy for every disease? One must not make someone dejected and pessimist.